God bless America indeed. I hope that you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun writing it. Welcome to BanjoVanClark.com. Today we're going to learn this intermediate, I call it a late intermediate, maybe early advanced version of God Bless America on the mandolin. We're going to do it in the key of C. This presented a challenge to me because the melody is so slow. It's long and drawn out. It has all these notes that last sometimes two whole measures. So we have to find things to do during that time while also keeping the melody at the forefront. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're watching somewhere else beside the website, I'd love to have you on board over there at BanjoBanClark.com. You can become a Gold Pick member, get access to over 600 lessons now. That's hard to believe. Let's jump right into God Bless America on the mandolin. What I'd like to do today is, of course, teach you this version of God Bless America in the key of C, but I have another message, and that other message is how to approach these songs that have long drawn out melodies and we have to find ways to fill up the empty spots without going overboard. And again, still keeping that melody at the forefront so people know what song we're playing. Let's just take a look really quick at what I'm talking about as far as a slow melody. I've got just the basic melody tabbed out for you here. Look there in the first measure. The first melody note, God bless America. The first one lasts a full four beats, right? And then the next two me uh, melody notes are half beat each. Bless America. And then when we land on that low G there in measure, uh, in the third measure on that line, it lasts two beats and then a full measure again. So we've got a challenge in front of us. We've got to communicate that melody again and then figure out what to do. Now, there's several different things that we can do. And there's several things that I uh, take advantage of in this version, as we'll see as we teach through it. But we can use some cross-picking elements. That's what I want to try to do. Uh, we can use some uh, chord and double-stop rhythm elements. I want to do that as well. And then, of course, we can draw from the scale to uh, create some runs that are interesting that, that collide again with our melody when our melody takes back off. So we'll see a little bit of all of those as we learn this. Let's check out the tab. I'm going to just walk up. Okay, the Melody technically does not start until we get to that C chord, that hammer on. But I'm going to walk in starting on the second beat. One, two, three, four. And immediately, I'm going to bring in a tool that I love to do, just double stop harmony. So the melody is on that A string. But since we're over a C chord, I know that that open E string is legal. So I'm going to use it just to thicken it up a little bit. Again, measure five, check that out. The regular melody goes. But I have an opportunity to slide into the melody. That's not hard to do. It's just something that ups the interest factor a little bit, I believe. And again, once we land on that G note there, that's going to hold out for a full six beats. So what in the world are we gonna do for the rest of that measure five? and then on through the rest of measure six, because that's what our melody is doing. Well, again, I'm going to use this harmony note. We're over a G chord, so I'm going to make a partial uh, G chord with my fret hand, and I'm going to use that double stop, and then there toward the end, look at what I do at the end of measure six. I got a little run there. Where am I going? Well, I'm going climbing up to where my melody note happens next in the next line. Okay, so just slowly, let me play this line for you. One, two, three. And there's our melody note, measure seven. Now let's just think about what our melody does in this line. Land that I love. Okay, so again, not many melody notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we have a lot of space to fill. And what I'm gonna do there, measure seven. What do I do there? What's that note, do you know? That's the seventh tone of the G. There's technically a G7 being played by the guitar in the accompaniment. So I'm gonna throw them a bone, let them know that I know which chord they're on, and I'm gonna grab one of those chord tones and play it with them. Then again, double stop harmony. And then I'm gonna use some slides when I can. So in measure eight, I'm playing that with my first two fingers, and then I'm gonna slide those up. That whole line.
Now, measure 11, that presented a bit of a challenge to me because here's what the melody does. So it's using these sixth intervals. What in the world am I going to do with that? So I decided to come down through the arpeggio and grab my A note down here by sliding into it. And then I've got a lot of space to fill in, right? So I've got to get creative, and I'm going to use some syncopated double stops here to fill in that time. It sounds like this, measure 11 and 12. Can you do that? Now that doesn't make a lot of sense if you just play that as a standalone lick, but in the context of the arrangement, it sounds really good. And then I'm going to, uh, again, walk down kind of the arpeggio and use some chord harmony. But my melody's there, isn't it? What does the melody do? Well, I get that by going. And then my next melody goes. And I get that by climbing down the scale in 13. So the whole line. Measure 15, what does the melody do? So not very much movement on the melody. So I have a little bit of freedom to get melodic with it, get a little jiggy with it, a little melodic with it. Okay, so again, in measures 15, 16, 17, you could do what you want to do because we've already played the melody. So... People already know what the melody is. We could have gotten away from it even a little bit more if we wanted, but I wanted to keep the I want to keep that melody in there and then just bring in some melodic scale licks to make them interesting. At the, at the end of measure 18, I'm going to introduce a triplet. That's just something else that I can do that's not too terribly difficult that increases the interest factor, a little bit of the wow factor. So you may need to work on those a little bit. Again, that line. Okay, now next we're going to go into what I would call the course of the tune. Um, the chord progression changes up just a little bit. Um, we get into a part of the melody that's very, very distinguishable. And in that, um, after we do that, we're going to play it through the whole solo slowly together. If you're watching somewhere else besides the website, you can come over to banjobenclark.com, download this tab along with the Jam Track MP3s, and play along with us. Mm -hmm. 